Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the specimen series. We're now well into the springtime and each spring I like to dedicate a little bit of my time into targeting the big bream that live in this big pit near my house. We have filmed on this pit before and I was fortunate enough to catch a few bream and a few of them were over £10. But I know the bream grow bigger than that in here. I've had them myself over 13 and I'm confident there's mid doubles. A personal best bream would be a really tall order. Blimey, it was nearly 20 years ago I was fortunate enough to catch an £18.2 bream. So you never know, somewhere as big as this, these bream are definitely getting bigger each season. You never quite know what could be out there. I felt there was no hurry to get here too early today because the bream tend to feed better later in the day and especially into the dark. So I've got here in the middle of the day, I've had a good walk round, swim choice is so important. So there are a few carp anglers here today, but the area that I favour for bream is quite quiet. So I've got my binoculars with me. I've had a look round to see if I can see any bream show, but they generally show much better later in the day, around the time that they're normally feeding. But the particular swim that I've chose has had good form in the past and there's a lovely gravel bar about 100 yards out and I know roughly where it is so I got the marker rod out just to reassure myself had a feel around the air with the marker float chose the distance I want to fish at and all three rods are fishing on the same bar with a nice spread of bait I feel the bream like feeding at range and those gravel bars are definitely magnets for those big bream so bait choice for me is a real simple one. Any carp angler out there will know how much bream like pellets. So the bulk of my mix is made up of mixed sized pellets and I got those pellets today from my local angling direct store in their pick and mix stand. I add to those pellets a can of sweet corn, some boily crumb and a few 10 mil tuna boilies. And then I've got those rods all on that same bar, as I mentioned, as neat as possible with the aid of the bait boat. The reason I use the boat, I like to use a pound and three quarter test curve rod and there's no way I'm getting a PVA bag, a two and a half ounce lead at 100 yards on those rods. So I can place them super neat on top of that bar with a real generous helping of bait. You need plenty of bait out there to begin with because these bream shells can be big shells and they are big bream and they'll clear the spot off really quickly. So if I'm fortunate enough to get a bite, I'll just top the spot up with a little bit of bait in the boat every time I place the rig back out there. I know I'm going to get those rigs as neat as possible because I've marked the lines with marker elastic and when I send the boat out, I simply wait for the marker elastic to run through my fingers and I can drop it on the same bar. So I feel they are as neat as possible. As I've said before, the bream tend to feed dusk just into dark but you never know I have been surprised they have fed earlier than that but for now I'm super confident it's time just to sit back and relax and hope that these bream turn up. Nothing happened this afternoon, but that's not unusual and that doesn't knock my confidence. It's not the first time I've fished for these big bream and it's usually into dark when they turn up. But the lake is starting to look nice. The wind has dropped. It really did get cold this afternoon when that wind picked up, hence the extra layers of clothing I've got on. The boats are out this afternoon. Whether that's what stops the bream from feeding more in the day, all that boat activity, I don't know. But it's always nice when the boats go in, the wind drops, and we're now coming into that time of day when I'm expecting the bream to turn up. I have been sitting in my chair looking at those rods, thinking, do I refresh them? Do I put some more bait out? But I'm confident they're out there neat. All that bait is still around them, and I've just got to wait for bite time. So hopefully, as we go into dark, those bobbins are going to start moving and those bream turn up. I was then thinking about getting into the sleeping bag. I, I normally find the quickest way to get a bite here is to think you're not going to get a bite and curl up in your sleeping bag. And the middle rod's lifted up tight. Not a particularly strong bite, but I am fishing a long way out, so there's lots of stretch in the line. But as soon as that bobbin pulled up tight, the bait runner gave a couple of clicks and we're into the first bream. Very unsociable hours, this big bream fishing. People say bream don't fight, this one's certainly hanging on. A 
Put them under the rod tips. On the rods. It's not huge, but it's a start. We're off the mark. Well, I didn't think that looked quite a double, but that is a male fish with all those spawning tubercles. So £9.12 is a nice start, and hopefully a few of his mates are out there. Well, like I said, by all those spawning tubercles, this is a male bream, this one, and they must be getting close to spawning for this to be all bobbly like it is. But not quite a double, but still a nice big bream. And it's just a big confidence boost to get in a bite. You get that first hour of dark without a bite and you wonder if it's going to happen. So hopefully that won't be the last bite of the night. I know Chris, the cameraman, would like some sleep. But I'd quite like to try and get a bigger bream. Go and find your grandma, please. You good? You good. literally just slipped that male fish back and the other rod's gone the left hand rod's gone this time and well the first proper one 12 pound five i believe this was probably one of the fattest bream i've ever caught but this is the exact reason why i fish these big pits bream when they get over 12 pounds they're a different beast altogether and wow i think they're fairly impressive well, how about that for a a dustbin lid of some people nickname them Thank you very much. Good morning, I might seem a little bit blurry eyed this morning, but regardless of that, I've dragged myself out of the sleeping bag and I've redone all three rods. I think it's important to get some fresh bait out there first thing in the morning. I've put fresh hook baits on and they're all fishing perfect. But what a result last night to get three bream through the night and two of them were doubles, including that nice 12 pounder. Well, that's good bream fishing in my world. The fishing in the daytime, as I've mentioned before, can be a bit touch and go on this pit, but I have caught them in the daytime. It'd be nice to catch them in the daytime for the camera, so you never know. But if they don't feed in the daytime, I've got another night tonight, and fingers crossed, we'll get some more before I have to go home. Well, 
example, it was no great surprise that I didn't get any action during the daytime, but we had some really rough wind and rain coming in the afternoon. So I just chilled out during the day, bracing myself for that weather and hoped that that weather front might switch them on for a daytime bite. But if I didn't get that bite in the daytime, I was really confident that they'd return after dark. Well, I've tucked myself under the brolly to hide from this cold wind now. That wind really has picked up this afternoon. And I thought whilst I'm sat here, I'd take five minutes just to talk you through the tackle that I use for fishing for these big bream. Now, rod choice can be a little bit of an awkward one. If you want to cast the long distances required for a lot of the bream on these big pits, you probably need to use a carp rod. But then if you're catching the bream on the carp rod, the fight isn't nowhere near as enjoyable. So for me, I choose to use a softer rod. I use the one and three quarter pound test curve Advanta RVS. They they suit all my specimen fishing, my bream fishing, my tench fishing, and playing those big bream on those nice soft rods as a real joy. And then on those rods, I've got some Advanta free spin reels, and I fill them up with either a 10 or a 12 pound line. So next that brings me on to rig choice and this is quite important. Without a doubt the bream in these big pits have got so large because they feed on the carp anglers baits. You could say they're a byproduct of the carp fishing. So therefore the bream are feeding on things such as boilies and pellets and I adopt a carp anglers rig but I slightly scale it down and I make it as neat as possible. So I like to use a leader. I use Fox Submerge leaders in 30 pound to protect that last meter of my main line on those aggressive gravel bars. Quite often they've got things such as zebra mussels on them and if you hook a big bream and he swims down the back of the bar that protects your main line. On the end of the leader it's a simple lead clip set up and then my hook link is normally a coated braid and I tie a little wafter on there with a KD style hair and then I put a big flat pear lead in the clip. The shape of the lead is important as well when I place it on those bars I don't want it to move out of position so anything from a two ounce up to a three ounce is normally adequate. If you want to know exactly how to tie that rig in more detail we're going to pop a link in the description below that will take you to a quick bite that will show you all the components you need and exactly how to do it but I think that's enough about tackle enough about rigs it's time to do some fishing and we're getting close to bite time I'm hoping those bream are going to return again tonight and I'm going to go big or go home tonight I was really pleased to catch three bream after dark, but I think with more bait out on the bar, I'll hold them there a little bit longer, and there's every chance I could catch one bigger than that 12 pounder. So as soon as this wind drops a little bit, I'm gonna get the bait boat out, I'm gonna load it up with more pellets and sweet corn and get them ready for the night ahead. I have no idea why these bream won't feed in the daytime, but literally an hour or two into dark, left hand rod has had a big drop back. I've got, well, if you can say a small male, a similar size to that first one I had um, last night. I'd say it's probably about nine to 10 pounds this one. Not a massive one, it's just another bite. So hopefully there's some more out there. Normally once you get one bite, you're not long in getting another one. So I'm gonna get this slipped back. I'm gonna get that rod put back out. and see if we can get one a bit bigger than that 12 pounder maybe.
Well, good morning. What a beautiful morning it is this morning. I'm so glad all that wild weather has gone. We had lots of heavy rain and strong wind last night. But after I had that fish around 11 o'clock, I had two more chances in the night, but both of those bream were quite small. I'd have said they were both about eight pound each, but because of the heavy rain and lots of wind, I've just slipped those fish straight back. But in the early hours this morning, just before it's got light, I've had one more fish and it's another nice one. And that fish is sitting in the net. I've just been waiting for the sun to come up. So I'll get that fish out now and we'll have a look at it before I pack everything up. there we go one more double figure bream for the session and excuse the pun but I think when bream get this big they're a completely different kettle of fish and the fact that the fishing on these big pits can be very challenging makes captures like this all the more rewarding so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a like and if you want to see future episodes of my specimen series don't forget to subscribe so I'm going to slip this fella back and hopefully I'll see you soon on the next episode